Hello, everyone. Welcome along to the Blood Red Morning Bulletin, your place every weekday live from 10 a.m. on the Blood Red YouTube channel, Liverpool.com, Facebook, and Twitter, as we bring you the latest Liverpool FC news and transfer rumours, of course, through the summer. I'm joined today by Liverpool.com's James Martin. James, how are you doing? Yeah, all good, thank you. Yeah, you were a last minute substitute for your colleague, Emmy <laughs> Gates, but yeah, uh, no worries on that front. Delighted to have you on with us. So let's start the show with Mataro Endo. He's going to be the main talking point today, isn't he? It's well, it's assumed that he completed his medical yesterday. We're very surprised if he failed it. So what do you think is the latest on this one, James? Do you think we can expect to see Endo announced by the end of today? Or do you think maybe we'll have to wait till the weekend? Yeah, I think, we'd, I think we'll see it by today. Obviously, no guarantees with these things. You never know what could sort of crop up at the last minute. And, you know, the name Nabil Fakir still whispered in hush tones, <laughs> isn't it? But, you know, it's, it's, yeah, as far as I know, I think it's probably looking on track for today, which would be very exciting. Yeah, very, very exciting. I mean, there's been plenty of talk about it. If you go on the Blood Red channel, everyone there's an explainer on the profile of the player. There was a brilliant analysing Anfield podcast yesterday with Josh Williams going through what he can bring to Liverpool. But I mean, James, from your point of view, then what do you expect his, you know, short term impact to be on Liverpool? Because it is pretty much a short term signing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've heard heard reports of a, of a three year deal, which is probably about right. That would take him to kind of. 33 but it's um, an interesting thing that that you can sort of note with him is his overall career minutes you often get this with Japanese players maybe they start a little bit later on often they complete a bit more formal education first before yeah. going into the career um so yeah you compare his career minutes to someone like Fabinho who of course is actually younger and he's played about 15,000 fewer minutes so in terms of longevity that's always quite a good sign I think People tend to look at the age, but you know, if you look at it logically, you know, minutes played is possibly more important in terms of like fatigue building up over time, long term. So, yeah, I mean, he is obviously, like you say, not a long term solution. He's not really the Fabinho heir because he, he's not going to be around forever at, at the age of thirty at, at the top level. But, but yeah, I think he, he could do a job for maybe longer than people are, are giving him credit for. But um, I think it's important as well in terms of. You look at Liverpool's position in the transfer market just in the next two weeks and it, it helps them out there in the sense that there's maybe a little bit less sort of, you don't want to say desperation, but that kind of urgency, I suppose, on the on the chase for a number six. You can sort of point to Endo now and say, well, look, we could we could ha go through a season with this guy as our number six. You know, he, he is a seasoned Bundesliga veteran. We haven't plucked him out of completely nowhere. I mean, much as it's an unusual signing for Liverpool to make it, it does make sense in that regard. So maybe maybe it helps that we don't sort of get held to ransom in some other deals. So I think on the mm. pits end off it, we could we could see a, a boost from him coming in. Yeah, it's true. It's nicely put calling it urgency, not desperation. But I think we all know it's desperation at this point, <laughs> Chase, isn't it? But no, it's a good point you make though, because you know, if Liverpool didn't have a six, clubs would be holding them out to ransom for more money. That just would happen. Whereas now they know they've got Endo in. I mean, I'm not sure that's going to massively aid them in that negotiation front, but who knows, it may well do. But um, yeah, exciting one there. We'll hopefully get that one announced by the end of today. Make sure everyone is keeping up to date with us here at Blood Red, across the Echo and Liverpool.com, because we'll bring you the latest on all that as soon as he signs and announced, and we'll make sure you're the first ones to see him in that Liverpool shirt. But um, anyway, let's move on then to another transfer rumour. Uh, Czech Dukore of Crystal Palace, James. It's been um, suggested that basically Palace are desperate to keep him. Of course, we know he's linked with Liverpool. Do you think Dakura would be the ideal second signing along with Endo for that number six position, or would you rather see him go for someone else? Yeah, I think he'd be he'd be pretty ideal in terms of what's left on the market at this point. Obviously, we know that Liverpool wanted Caicedo, and they probably wanted Lavia more as well. But you know, they're gone, they're done. So you know, I don't really want to hear their names again now. So yeah, all <laughs> focus on Dakura, and uh, yeah, he fits the bill nicely as well. And to be honest, if Liverpool can get him at the price, they sort of think they might be able to get him at, then he could be a better deal than, than at least Lavia. If you look at his his experience, it is better because they both have one Premier League season under their belts. But Decore before that had a couple of solid campaigns in Liga and, and then another one in, in the French second tier before that. So, you know, he is more experienced at kind of a senior level. That's, that's useful. Um, but also at the same time, really high ceiling, only 23, you know, so he is that combination of he can come in and play immediately, but he also has that potential to get much better. So, yeah, I like it. It just depends on the price point. I think, obviously, like you say, Steve Parrish has come out, the, the Palace chairman, the CEO, not sure exactly what his title is, but big wig at Jim Palace. Leader. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he, he's obviously said that it would take something unbelievable 
for them to sell anyone at this point in the window. But that that reeks of kind of posturing, doesn't it? You know, he'd yeah. say that, wouldn't he? They'd be obviously going to try and get the best deal they can if De Clare does leave. So that's just kind of the opening salvo there. I, I wouldn't say it really makes me any more or less optimistic about getting hold of him. But yeah, it's all about the price point. I think Palace have been said to want about 70 million. That does seem on the high side. But at the same time, Liverpool, I think it's sort of below Lavia's fee. And I think that's optimistic. Mm. I think if, if there's somewhere in between the two, then I think that's where the deal could be struck. And it would be a decent one for both parties. Yeah, as much as I think Steve Parrish is obviously trying to drive a fee, I just can't see Liverpool paying that much for Decore if they weren't going to pay it for Lavia. I mean, as good as a player he is, and I think your Liverpool.com colleague, uh, Ben Botch, that wrote a good piece on, you know, when he played at Lawn and how they're a much, you know, more possession-based side. And he's actually really good on the ball from that number six position, which you often don't get to see at Crystal Palace because they've been quite, you know, reactionary in the way they play, aren't they? They're not exactly keeping the ball well, are they, Palace, at all times necessarily. But, um, yeah, I think there's definitely a great player in there. I just can't really see Liverpool... You know, paying that much for him at this point now after, you know, the deal for Casado and Mavia fell through. I know that's more on personal terms, but yeah, I'd, I'd be very surprised if they were to go for Decore, but hopefully I could be pleasantly surprised. Um, there's actually a lot of transfer rumours come through today, James. We'll try and get through as many of them as we can. Uh, the next one's Gabri Vega, and apparently Napoli have reached a verbal agreement with him. I mean, we know Liverpool were massively linked with him throughout the summer, throughout last season. You know, he's a very exciting player. Plays further forward. He's obviously not a number six. He's more of a 10 slash eight yeah, Napoli expected to pay around 36 million euros, 6 million in add-ons. I mean, he's a great player, James. I think Liverpool could maybe look back and regret the chance that, you know, they could have signed a really promising young attacking midfielder here. Or do you think they're covered now with Shamoslav McAllister coming in? Yeah, that's the thing. I think it was always... I think there were there was substance to the links. I think he was on on a list at the club. But I think Shamoslav and McAllister were both higher on the list. So once they came through... We saw all of those links go quiet, didn't they? I mean, a couple of them have resurfaced again now, if you look at someone like Kefren Turam. But for the most part, once those two were through, that was kind of it for for those kind of links. And Vega was very much in that bracket. And I think the fact that, you know, Henderson's gone now and maybe we're seeing a couple more links to number eights again, the fact that it's Gravenberg and, um, and like I say, Kefren Turam, who've kind of come a little bit more to the fore again, maybe suggests that, that Gabri Vega was was somewhere towards the bottom of that list. That's not to say Liverpool might not regret it. No one knows how his career is going to pan out. Obviously, all of these players that are being linked to young players with high ceilings, that's why the club was interested in them. So it's always a little bit of a lottery who goes on to really become a bit of a world beater and who just yeah. goes on to have a, a solid career. So, yeah, I mean, it, it could be one that Liverpool regrets, but it, that's not to say it's a mistake. It's just Liverpool made their choice and I don't think they'll have any regrets about Sobers Lyon McAllister who've already looked really impressive so yeah it's um it's just one of those isn't it but you know often you get old managers and you know scouts come out saying x could have nearly gone to y or what could have been type thing it's just how football works there's always going to be hundreds more players that you've chosen interest in than ones who actually sign so yeah it's it's not one I'm too bothered about no, yeah, he's a player I'm a big fan of, and I'd, I'd be very surprised though if he were to move to the Premier League. Obviously, he's not now, but you know, it did come around as a bit of a surprise and a rumor that I sort of discredited because you know those light, attacking, intricately technical Spanish players tend to struggle moving to the very physical Premier League, don't they? So I think Napoli's probably the best move for Vegas' career on that front. Um, yeah, let's move swiftly on then, shall we? Because as I said, there's about ten transfer rumors. I think Liverpool are basically being linked with every defensive midfielder in world football at the moment. Uh, we've got a lot of comments about this one, James, and there's a lot of reports on Twitter as well. Mario Lamina at Wolves is a bit of a strange transfer that's come out of completely nowhere. Um, it's Foot Mercato, the main ones. They've claimed Liverpool are one of the teams considering a move for Lamina, although they're expected to face competition from Saudi Arabian clubs. Now, what do you make of this one? I mean, could this be another little shrewd signing or do you think it's a bit of a nonsense one? It's a bit of a random one, that's for sure. It's definitely come out of nowhere. Um I think if we hadn't signed Endo, assuming that all goes through, then maybe it would have made sense as that kind of slightly more experienced figure who can come in and play straight away as we sort of bring someone else through alongside him. But as, you know, as we've got, well, hopefully I've got Endo for that, it does seem like a bit of a strange one. You can't necessarily see Lamina coming in and becoming an absolute world beater at Liverpool. He's been he's been around the block a little bit with, with a two or three Premier League sides now. And I've always liked the look of him. Like, I do like him as a player. It's just a question of, you know, how does that, what's the long-term plan? Like, if we get Endo and Lamina in, what, what's 
what's next? What, what's the plan with that? It seems a bit random. Yeah. Like you say, it does seem a bit scattergun with number sixes being linked left, right, and centre. So I can see why he might have showed up on the radar and maybe maybe that's a legitimate piece of information that, that Mercato have put hold of. But I think probably if Endo gets rounded off today, as we expect, we might not be looking any further at Lamina. I think just because Endo is such a random signing out of nowhere, sort of, without wanting to discredit him, but basically an average-ish random midfielder from Europe's top five leagues. I think we're going to see a lot of similar players like Lamina linked. But yeah, I mean, very surprised that they were to go for two players, you know, nearing 30 in the same position. I think they'll see someone surely a bit younger come in as the you know, second number six signed in this window, if they do get a second one in at all. Yeah, interesting to see how that one plays out. As I said, Endo, we should expect should be done by the end of today, and I'd like to think they'd get another one in. I think I personally, I, w- I would want Decore, but I don't think they'll pay that fee, will they? But um, anyway, let's move on to centre back, shall we, James? Because we know Liverpool are in the market for a left sided centre back. I'm going to give you two names here to talk to actually, because they've both been linked this morning and yesterday. Uh, Pierre Hincapier of Bayer Leverkusen, and I believe Ecuador is a Caicedo team. I think they share the same agent as well. So. Yeah, good luck with that one. And Arthur, I'm not sure how to pronounce the surname. I think I'll go for Teat because he's Belgian. Uh, Belgian international. He plays for someone in Liga. I can't remember the team now. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you those two to talk to. Red, I think. I think it must be, yeah, because he, he was at Bologna, I think, wasn't he? And then Ustended Belgium. But um, anyway, yeah, those two players, if you had to pick one of them, why and why would you not go for the other one? Well, I have to uh, give the hat tip to Dave Comerford, listening to the last Liverpool.com podcast we were going through. Left side of centre-backs Liverpool could sign, but hadn't necessarily been massively linked with, and he did pick out Arthur Tayat. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give him the credit there and maybe side with him. He, he sold me on the podcast. It does sound like he's a good profile fit. Strong in the air, that's always important for Liverpool, isn't it? And, yeah, comfortable on the ball. Like we say, left-footed, left-sided. So, you know, he comes in, can maybe kind of cover that Robertson role in certain games if we wanted a player for that in the new hybrid system and then looking longer term if it all goes well someone who can maybe take over that Virgil van Dijk berth obviously you don't really want to burden anyone with that as sort of naming them as the van Dijk successor but if a left-sided player comes in there it's pretty clear that is going to be the hope if not the if not the plan for the long term so yeah I do like him I also like King Capi to be fair I haven't seen loads of him but he's from what I have seen he, he has looked like a Good player, very sort of physical player. I suppose in that sense, maybe you could say he has a little bit more of the kind of Van Dijk aura around him and that he's physical and also rapid, which is always always something Liverpool likes. But yeah, I think if I had to pick between one of the two, mostly just because I'm more informed on him at this point, I would lean towards Tea. But you can see why they're both being linked for sure. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm the complete opposite to you there, James. I don't really know much about Tea, but I've seen Incapier play a few times. I think he actually played left back in the World Cup for Ecuador. It was really good there, really quick, great on the ball. Obviously, big physical presence. I mean, he'd be a perfect signing, wouldn't he, for that left sided centre back role, especially in the back three. If you maybe wanted to shift Robertson out for a game and give him a rest, you know, Incapier could definitely cover in on the left side. Only 21 as well, and Tea only 23, I think. Those two would be a great profile of player to go for. Although I think someone said Incapio is currently injured at the moment, so maybe that hints that they will go for Tea as you and they recommend. But um, anyway, yeah, we'll leave that on there for today. Everyone, lots more transfer rumours to come, I think, over the next couple of weeks as the window nears completion. Liverpool are looking pretty light, aren't they, in that centre back? Oh, looks like we've lost Patrick there, but I think we we're just about done anyway. So. Thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll be back next weekday and be sure to check out Liverpool.com for all of your Liverpool content for today. We'll keep you up to date with any new rumours coming through and yeah, we'll see you soon.